Hello, hello, Egyptians. So imagine if you had a time machine and you could go far back as the five, as the fifth century BC in Egypt. What Egypt would have looked like? What ha what would you what would you have seen? What was Egypt like uh, back then? Uh, so, <laughs> well, we've got a guy uh, who was alive back then and wrote a book, an entire book about this travel in Egypt. The name of this guy is was Herodotus. And fasten your seatbelt, we're going back 2,500 years. So from the second book of histories, entitled Histories by Herodotus, um, where he reported uh, every single tale that he was told and every single thing that he saw in Egypt, uh, I selected 15 of the most interesting topics to me. Um, and uh, I, I, I assume it's going to be a long video, so I'm gonna we probably, we probably begin right now. So the first thing uh, I would like to I selected is like is, is there so all of these things are, are all of these uh, item topics that I selected are questions and uh, so and uh, I found some answers uh, in the Herodotus report. So the first uh, question would be who were the first people on Earth? This was a question from 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 Herodotus and. I'm quoting, uh, now before Psammeticus became king of Egypt, the Egyptians believed that they were the oldest people on earth. But ever since Psammeticus became king and wished to find out which people were the oldest, they have believed that the Phrygians were older than they, and they than everybody else. Psammeticus devised a plan by which he took two newborn children of the common people and gave them to a shepherd to bring up among his flocks. He gave instructions that no one was to speak a word in their hearing. They were to stay by themselves in a lonely hut and in due time the shepherd was to bring goats and give the children their milk and do everything else necessary. Some medicus did this and gave these instructions because he wanted to hear what speech would first come from the children. When they were past the age of indistinct babbling and he had his wish, when the shepherd had done as he was told for two years, both children ran to him stretching out their hands and calling Bacchus as he opened the door and entered. When he first heard this, he kept quiet about it, but when coming often and paying careful attention, he kept hearing this same word he told his master at last and brought the children into the king's presence as required. Psammeticus then heard then the himself and asked to what language the word Bacchus belonged. He found it to be a Phrygian word, signify bread. Reasoning from this, that the Egyptian acknowledged that the Phrygians were older and older than they. The Greeks say, among many foolish things, that Psammeticus had the children reared by a woman whose tongues, whose tongue had been cut out. So this is the first story about uh, how <laughs> who were the first people on Earth, and quite a cruel one. So second. Uh, what was the best calendar system uh, in, of the age, of that age? And so Herodotus was saying, I'm quoting, The Egyptians were the first men who reckoned by ears and made the ear consist of 12 divisions of their seasons. They discovered this from the stars, and their reckoning is, to my mind, a juster one that 
that of the Greeks. For the Greeks had an intercalary month every other year, so that the season agree. But the Egyptians, reckoning 30 days to each of the 12 months, add 5 days in every year over and above the total, and thus the completed circle of season is made to agree with the calendar. So he, so Herodotus here recognized that the Egyptian calendar was way ahead uh, than the Greek one. Interesting fact. Uh, and then we've got where the quarries from which the pyramids where, where, where were the quarries of the pyramids of Giza and uh, he said beyond and above Heliopolis Egypt is a narrow land for it is bounded on the one side by the mountains of Arabia which run north to south always running south towards the sea called the Red Sea in these mountains are the quarries that were hewn out for making the pyramids at Memphis so and it turns out that it's like the modern day quarries of uh, Tura, it's in south east Cairo, and they still quarry stones there, so limestone, so they're still there. Um, so we go, but um, how did the pyramids of Giza look like back then? So we are in, f in the 5th century BC, so it's 2500 years ago, how did they look like? As for Egypt then, I credit those who say it and myself very much believe it to be the case, for I have seen that Egypt projects into the sea beyond the neighboring land, and shells are exposed to view on the mountains, and things are coated with salt, so that even pyramids show it. So here it also says that the pyramids were coated in salt, uh, as, the, as the rocks um, nearby were coated with the shells. Interesting. Um, how did, how, what kind of people were the Egyptians? Uh, how did they behave? So, And Herodotus saying, they are religious beyond measure, more than any other people. They drink from cups of bronze. They are especially careful always to wear newly washed linen. They practice circumcision and their priests shave the whole body every other day. They do not consume or spend anything of their own, the monks, the priests. Sacred food, food is cooked for them, beef and goose are brought in great abundance to each man every day, and wine and grape is given to them. They may not eat fish. The Egyptians sow no beans in their country. They will not eat them, considering beans an unclean kind of legume. And the whole book uh, it's like the vast majority of the book is about uh, how the Egyptian behaved back then so we're not gonna go through all of all of the all of this but I found it interesting that he was saying that the Egyptians were the most religion relig religious people you know, he, he ever found um, so then he asked himself if the Egyptian had some gods and we also in Greece have some gods. Uh, which gods came first? <laughs> which are the most important? And he's like, in fact, the names of nearly all the gods came to Hellas from Egypt, except the names of Poseidon and Dioscuri, and Hera, and Hestia, and Temis, and the Graces, and the Nereids. The names of all the gods have always existed in Egypt. Alone of all nations, the Libyans have had among them the name of Poseidon from the beginning, and they have always honored this god. The Egyptians, however, are not accustomed to pay any honors to heroes. So, for example, they didn't have any hero, any hero like, you know, uh, whatever, like, <laughs> like, like the Greeks. So, this is also very interesting. Although the Egyptians uh, had uh, these god-like figures uh, that had their own histories, we're gonna go through the myths and gods uh, very soon, but uh, not, not now. But I found this was very interesting. Uh, and now, he... So imagine a Greek guy coming to Egypt and starting to see some weird animals, like crocodiles and, and stuff. Uh, but but there, there is one in particular that uh, I found quite interesting and 
and uh, <laughs> and he's the phoenix. And the hero uh, so the phoenix is is a bird. Uh, it's a legendary bird that apparently used to live every every 500 years. There was one, and uh, one once the phoenix died, um, was approaching uh, was approaching death. Uh, he the, the, he would create a nest and to like fire him, fire fire, fire the nest, uh, put it on fire, and. Um, and go into the fire and like disappear and then a new a new phoenix would uh would be born from the ashes uh from the ashes and um and so the that bird will what would that bird do would create an egg from the ashes of the father and fly to the temple of the sun in heliopolis and uh, Position and locate and locate the egg uh, onto an altar in the temple of the sun. And so I'm quoting here maybe um, uh, Herodotus what, what 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 he was saying about it. So there is another sacred bird, too, whose name is Phoenix. I myself have never seen it. I only pictures I only seen pictures of it. Uh, for the bird seldom comes into Egypt once in 500 years, as the people of Heliopolis say. It is said that the phoenix comes when his father dies. His plumage is partly golden and partly red. He is most like an eagle in shape and size. Flying from Arabia to the temple of the sun, they say, he conveys his father in, in, encased in mirror and buries him at the temple of the sun. He first molds an egg of mirror and heavy, as heavy as he can carry, then tries lifting it, and when he has tried, he then, he then hollows out the egg and puts his father into it and plasters over with more mirror to hollow the egg into which he has put his father, which is the same in weight with his father lying in it and he conveys him in case to the temple of the sun in Egypt. Anyway, this is what Herodotus says. <laughs> um, oh, this is a super interesting one. It's so basically, the, there was no concept of mummifi mummification back then. There was not the word mummy. Uh, and so imagine what would have looked like from a foreigner uh, a mummy. It would, look, would have looked like a wooden statue. And so <laughs> the funny thing is that if you would have seen a mummy, if you would have opened a coffin, a recent mummy, you actually would have seen uh, something that would look exactly like a wooden statue just by ex like super similar to the person who died and was the so 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 basically for this it was like magic for them and, and for us as well it's how can you turn a dead body into a wooden statue naturally and so here we have what uh, what herodotus has been told by the by the people who used to mummificate <laughs> people when a dead body is brought to them they show those who brought it wooden models of corpses, painted likeness. The most perfect way of embalming belongs, they say, to one whose name it would be impious for me to mention in treating such a matter. The second way which they show is less perfect than the first and cheaper, and the third is the least costly of all. Having shown this, they ask those who brought the body in which way, in which way they desire to have it prepared. Having agreed on a price, the bearers go away, and the workmen left alone in their place and bound the body. They first draw out part of the brain through the nostrils with an iron hook and inject certain drugs into the rest, then making a cut near the flank with a sharp knife of Ethiopian stone, they take out all the intestines and clean the belly, rinsing it with palm wine and bruised spices. They sew it up again after filling the belly with pure ground mirror and casia and any other spices except frankincense. After doing this, they conceal the body for 70 days, embalmed in salpetre. No longer time is allowed for the embalming. And when the 17 days have passed, they wash the body and wrap the whole, the whole of it in bandages of fine linen cloth, anointed with gum which the Egyptians mostly use instead of glue. Then they give the dead man back to his friends, 
this may this make a hollow wooden figure like man in which they enclose the corpse shut it up and keep it safe in a coffin chamber placed erect against a wall this is was how they mummified so far uh, and then, so so he obviously saw the pyramids of Giza, uh, but he asked himself, are there uh, more pyramids than the Giza ones? And quote, this Moeris was remembered as having built the northern forecourt of the temple of Hephaestus, and dug a lake of as great a yeah, circumference, as I shall later indicate, and built pyramids there also, the size of which I will mention when I speak of the lake. Uh, all this was Moeri's work, they said of none of the rest had they anything to record. This lake has a circumference of 450 miles. Its length is from north to south. That is that is that that it has been dug out and made by man's hands, the lake shows for itself. For almost in the middle of it stands two pyramids, so built that 50 fathoms of each are below 50 above the water. Atop each is a colossal stone figure seated on a throne. Thus these pyramids are 100 fathoms high and 100 fathoms equal a furlong of 600 feet. The fathom measuring 6 feet or 4 cubits. The water of the lake is not natural but brought by a channel from the Nile. Six months it flows into lake and six back into the river. For the six months that it flows out of the lake, daily take of fish brings a silver talent into the royal treasury and 20 minae for each day of the flow into the lake. What does it mean? Somebody built a, ba a big lake artificially and put it two pyramids in the middle. Uh, and uh, we actually find these, py these pyramids uh, there's not much left of them, but they, they have been found. They're not confirmed by archaeology, but there are studies that prove that those two could be the pyramids. I'm gonna show you like, uh, like a picture and uh, I'm gonna leave you a link in the description to go to the original document of the research. So this is a super interesting one. There is no information about these pyramids. So this is something super cool. Uh, the questions of the questions of all the time how the Egyptians built the pyramid quoting Herodotus they said that Egypt was altogether well governed and prospered greatly but that Cheops Khufu who was the next king brought the people to utter misery he closed all the temples and next he compelled all the Egyptians to work for him to some he assigned the task of dragging stones from the quarries in the Arabian mountains to the Nile, and after the stones were ferried across the river in boats, he organized others to receive and drag them to the mountains called Libyan. They worked in gang of a hundred thousand men, each gang for three months. For ten years, to the people were themselves out building the road over which the stones were dragged, work which was in my opinion not much lighter at all than the building of the pyramid themselves. The aforesaid ten years went to the building of this road, and of the underground chambers in the hill where the pyramids stand, these the king meant to be burial places for himself, and surrounded them with water, bringing in a channel from the Nile. The pyramid itself was twenty years in the making, its base is square, each side eight hundred feet long, and its height is the same. The whole is of stone polished and most exactly fitted. There is no block of less than 30 feet in length. This pyramid was like star. This pyramid was made like stairs. When this is when this its first form was completed, the workmen used short wooden logs as levers to raise the rest of the stones. They heaved up the blocks from the ground onto the first tiers of steps. When the stone had been raised, it was set on another level that stood on the first tire, and the lever against used to lift it from the tires to the next. It may be that there was a new lever on each tire of steps, or perhaps there was only one lever, quite portable, which they carried up to each tire in turn. I leave this uncertain, as both possibilities were mentioned. But this is certain, that the upper part of the pyramid was finished off first. 
then the next below it, and the last of all the base and the lowest part. There are writings on the pyramid in Egyptian karates indicating how much was spent on radishes and onions and garlic for the workman. And I'm sure that when he read when he read me the writing, the interpreter said that 1600 talents of silver had been paid. So note, uh, the Egyptians said um, that uh, I mean, archaeology, sorry, the archaeology says that two, the pyramids uh, were the tombs of the pharaohs, but nobody ever found uh, any mummy there and any 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 pharaoh in a, in a pyramid. So where is Khufu? Where is the burial chamber of Khufu? And who built the, the other pyramids? The Egyptians say that this Cheops reigned for, for 50 years. At his death, he was succeeded by his brother, Kefren. Kefren also built the pyramid smaller than his brother. I have measured it myself. It has no underground chambers, nor is it entered like, a, like the other by a canal from the Nile. But the river comes in through a built passage and encircles in islands, in which they say Cheops himself lies. This pyramid was built on the same scale as the other, except that it falls 40 feet short on its height, it stands near the Great Pyramid, the lowest layer of its invariated Ethiopian stone. Both of them stand on the same ridge, which is about 100 feet high. Catherine, they said, reigned for 56 years. So no reference of any sort on any burial chamber in the pyramids from Herodotus. This is very, very curious. Um, any other pyramid? Yes, so there was a guy, uh, Azukis, became king of Egypt and uh, his desire to excel all who ruled Egypt before him, this king left a pyramid of brick to, commemor to commemorate his name on which is this writing cut on a stone. Quoting, Do not think me less than pyramids of stone, for I excel them as much as Zeus does other gods, for they stuck a pole down into a marsh and collected what mud clung to the pole, made bricks of it and thus built me. We don't know where this pyramid is and we don't know anything about this Azuki, Azuki's king. I haven't found anything. Curious, very curious. Last and the most interesting and enthusiastic and mysterious absolutely out of this world is the lost labyrinth of Hawara. Now we're gonna make a video just on this, uh, just dedicated entirely on this on this topic. Uh, maybe it can be the next video, but I don't know. I'm quoting Herodotus for this. Moreover, they decided to preserve the memory of their names by a common memorial, and so they made a labyrinth, a little way beyond the Lake Moeris and near the place called the City of Crocodiles. I have seen it myself. And indeed, words cannot describe it. If one were to collect the walls and evidence of other efforts of the Greeks, the sum would not amount to the labor and cost of this labyrinth. And yet the temple at Ephesus and the one at Samos are not worth it. Though the pyramids beggar description and each one of them is a match for many great monuments built by Greeks, this maze surpasses even the pyramids. It has 12 roof courts with doors facing each other, six face north and six south in two continuous lines, all within one outer wall. There are also double sets of chambers, 3000 altogether, 1500 above and the same number underground. We ourselves viewed those that are above ground and speak of what we have seen, but we learned through conversation about the underground chambers, the Egyptian caretakers will by no means show them as they were. They say the burial vaults of the kings who first built this labyrinth and of the sacred crocodiles. Thus we can only speak from hearsay of the lower chambers, the upper we saw for ourselves. And they are creations greater than human. The, exi the exits of the chambers and the mazy passages, hidden and 
theater through the courts where an unending marvel to us as we passed from court to apartment and from apartment to colonnade from colonnades against to more chambers and then into yet more courts over all this is a roof made of stone like walls and the walls are covered with cut figures and every court is set around with pillars of white stone very precisely fit together near the corner where the labyrinth ends stands a pyramid 240 feet high on which great figures are cut a passage to this has been made underground this is a quote from from the book and uh, it sounds crazy but somebody found this labyrinth it was always um, think by the archaeologists uh, and main scholars that Herodotus made this story up but no somebody found this labyrinth and I might tell you about this the next the next video <laughs>